Now we're looking at question four from exercise 7L, and this one involves a bit of algebra as well as calculator work. So somebody is modeling the cost of making some shirts in a factory, dependent on how many shirts are being made. And they've come up with this power model here. So it's a model that has B as a power. That's gonna be a constant. So it could be a quadratic or cubic or something similar to that. And it has the variables N for the number of shirts being made and the variable S for the cost of production. First part says that if no shirts at all are being made, then the cost of production is still going to be 1,000. So that's like a constant. It doesn't matter how many shares are being made. It doesn't matter what the input variable is. You're always going to have to add on this 1,000 at the end. Then it says, find the value of C. So you might already be able to make the connection between the things I've underlined there and that question. If not, though, let's have a look at the function itself. S equals A N to the power of B plus C. If this N, the number of shirts, was zero, this whole term here would disappear, leaving you with just S equals C. Well, the, the cost S must be a thousand in that particular case. Therefore, C must equal a thousand. So I'll just write that out maybe in more step by step detail. S equals A to the N power of B plus C. If N is zero, then we're told that S is a thousand. So 1,000 equals A times 0 to the power of B plus C. That whole thing disappears. Therefore, 1,000 is C. Okay. The next part, determine a linear equation of ln, natural log, S minus C against natural log of N in terms of A and B. So this is a relatively straightforward thing if you know what it's asking for. It sounds a bit complicated at first. When we have a power function like this, we can use logs to linearize it, make it linear. You've seen that in examples before with the Richter scale for earthquakes. That is a logarithmic scale that has been linearized. So it looks like a straight line on the graph. The numbers go up in a nice kind of orderly fashion, but actually it implies an exponential growth. You probably have seen linearized graphs of the virus spreading recently. If you look on the scale of the side, you'll have a, a logarithmic scale. So going like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000. And yet the line is straight. Well, that's what they're doing here. So the way it works algebraically is by applying a log, in this case, natural log, could be log base 10 as well, to both sides. And there's a little algebraic trick that then basically gets rid of the power. We're stopping it being a power function, so quadratic, cubic, and making it into a linear function. And that's a very useful thing to do because the graph is easy to read. You can do more things with it. So the way it works is we take the function itself and we take logs of both sides. Now, I'm going to do it wrong initially to show you from one very common mistake here. If you take logs of both sides in this situation, we're not going to be able to do what we want to do. Natural log of S is fine. Put a bracket around there. You don't need to do it really, but just to make it obvious what is going in the log. Now, if I take natural log of this whole side, we get this. And nothing wrong with that initially, but the whole point of doing this is to get rid of this power, to bring this power down to the level of a regular number. But we can't do that here because there's no way to simplify something like this. When it has a plus C in this case inside the natural log, you can't simplify that. It isn't. It's not that. Remember, logs will have the kind of opposite rule to powers. If the two numbers are being multiplied and the powers are added, if the two powers, i.e. the logs, are being added, then the original base numbers are being multiplied. And if, you, if that sounds unfamiliar to you, you need to revise the log laws that we looked at earlier on. There's a video for that, or have a look in the, uh, in the textbook or any video about log laws. I'll just write that there. But you should know that that's not one of them. So that is wrong. Don't follow that. Instead, we need to get the C onto this side here. I'm getting rid of this whole thing here, actually. If we subtract C from both sides, we get S minus C. And the clue for that actually was in the question. It wanted the 
graph or the equation and then graph later of natural log s minus c well that's for this reason we have to take the c off here now we're left with something that we can usefully take the logs of and then simplify so take the log of both sides again that just means put both inside a log like that and then we do natural log of a n b don't be too confused with the n here and the n here they're not the same thing that's just natural logarithm it's just that's the the notation we use this n is the variable for the number of shirts being made they're not related at all we've got the same problem here we can't simplify this at all that's not a thing we can do we don't need to because we're actually supposed to find it in terms of natural log s minus c so that's all good when we have this kind of expression this is what we're looking for we can do two things here if you have two terms being multiplied together in the log you can separate those out into addition logs and it's the reverse of the powers when the logs are powers so i won't be lazy i'll write this out again like that and then i'm going to write these two here so natural log of a add natural log of n to the power of b so that's something you can do because these two are multiplied there and if we had these two being added we could combine them into one multiplication log there However, we still haven't really done what we're supposed to be doing here, which is to get rid of this power and make it linear. But now we can do that. If you have a power of a term inside a log, that power can come to the front here. And it can multiply. And I'll just put a dot there to show that. It can multiply the original term like that. So the power is kind of floated to the front. And it's a kind of analogy of the power law that when you have a bracket and a power, you, you do multiply the powers in that case. That's what's happened here. So this is good. Now, this is actually now a linear expression. In fact, if I just rearrange it slightly, it seems a bit pointless at first, but you'll see why in a second I'm going to do this. I'm going to put this B multiplied natural log of N on the front there, and then natural log of a there now a is just going to be a constant number because it's actually the same a as this but we just don't know what it is yet but it's going to be a constant so therefore natural log of a is also going to be a constant so let's just temporarily write that as c well b is also a constant again we don't know what it is yet it's the constant that's the power here and now it's here so that's also a constant. And this ln of n, well, that's the variable because the n is the, the input, the number of shirts being made. It's kind of like an x in a linear equation. And this b is kind of like the thing that you normally times x by in a linear equation, m. This is the output. So this ln s minus c is kind of like a y. So we've now got an equation that is basically in the form of y equals mx plus c. It's in a linear equation form. Admittedly, it doesn't look much like it, but if you think about that as a output variable equals input variable times constant plus constant, that's what it is. So we've got it. We were asked to determine a linear equation of ln s minus c against ln of n in terms of a and b. Yeah, we have that. And this is confirmed by looking at the actual answers here. So it's the same thing over in. Yeah, okay, that's good. Now we have to actually make a graph. So it says plot the data points of ln s minus c against ln. So that means we have to do some working out, which is a bit tedious, but luckily there's only four points to do. So we make a little table here. We're treating our our x, I suppose, as the L n of n and then the y the output is the ln the natural log of s minus c so we can work these out pretty easily by just using these values here but instead of it just being n and s it's now natural log of n and natural log of s minus c so it's not really very interesting to watch but let me watch the first one you can skip the rest if you're happy with what i'm doing here so natural log of n is and then 50 and do a bit of rounding here which might throw the answer off slightly but just to save some time so 3.91 let's put that in there that'll do 
um, natural log of 100, 4.61, natural log of 150, 5.01, that'll do, and then natural log of 200, that's going to be 5.2, I'm going to have 298, a bit more rounding there. And then over here, so we've got natural log of S minus C. That means we're going to do the natural log of this, but also subtract the C. Remember, the C is a thousand, so we have to do that in this case, because that's not what's on the table originally. That's what we need to work out because of the rearrangement we did. So for the first one, it's actually going to be a thousand. And it's 6.91 we'll go for. Next one is going to be natural log of 1,800. 7.49, put six in there. Natural log of, looks like 2,400, 7.78, that'll do. And then natural log of three, no, not three, 2,800, 7.94, okay. So this is our data from this linearized log function. And what do we have to do with this? So to plot the data points on a graph. Okay, so we'll do, we'll put the, the data points into here actually, and then we'll do the sketch on here, but you probably would have to put this on a proper axis, like an exam, but it would, it would give you the axis. So that won't be difficult. So that's 0 0.61, 5.01, 5.2, 5 5.98, then 6.91, 7 7.496, 7.78, 7.94. Okay, we'll just graph those. Just do the settings, make sure I've got the right thing here. So X is on list one, Y is on list two, that looks good. Graph one is scatter, yeah, that's fine. So we're gonna graph that and just like that. Fine. Okay, so it depends on the scale you're using, depending on what it's actually going to look like. Uh, the graph they've got here looks pretty similar. Slightly, they've got a different scale, got a more squashed up scale than we've got here, but you've got a similar kind of thing. It's rising up. We could fiddle around and make it look like this if we wanted to, but that's not really that important right now. If you had to plot the graph on a certain scale, it would tell you that. So we've got the graph and we've got the values. Then it says, Find values for B and LNA using linear regression. Right, so this is, it's important to see here that the values we've got here are in the form of a linear expression. So input of X, output of Y, basically. So when we do linear regression on this, it's the calculator is going to act as if we've just put in something that has this sort of form, this Y equals MX plus C form. And although the calculator does it as y equals a x plus b or y equals b x plus a, but the same sort of thing. So it's going to give us an m, it's going to give us a c, or it's going to give us an a and a b, as it says. And those are going to correspond to these terms here. This whole thing is going to give us that whole thing there, and it's going to give us this thing here, this thing in front here. So it's very important to carefully interpret what the calculator is telling us. Let's see what it actually makes though. So, and there's the added confusion as well that the calculator has A and Bs on it and we've got A and Bs, but they might not be the same A and Bs, unfortunately. Go to regression. So it's the same data in there. Regression, we're using linear regression because this is a linear expression now. So we can use the first one here. And do we want the A to be the thing times in the X or the B to be the thing times in the X? It's the same expression either way. I'm actually going to pick, I'm going to pick this one just because to avoid confusion, we've got the B multiplying the, the input variable there anyway. So it would make sense just to pick B there. It doesn't really matter as long as you're aware of what it's giving you. So there we go. Okay, so the A is 3.99. 6 and then the b is 0 0.75 and so on so those are the values here so i guess what we could do is write out what we've just been given we've been given this function here so y equals and it's going to be let's do a bit of rounding here 0 
So that's the thing that goes in front of the X. And then plus... Now, it's 3.9959, so that really should round the 3. Point, well, it should round the 4, shouldn't it? I'm going to keep it at 3.99, because I've noticed in the answers that's what they've got. Clearly, it's just a bit of rounding involved there. So I'm going to keep it as that 3.99, just for consistency with the answers in the book. Okay, so we've got this. That is our linear expression here. But that is not the original function we're looking for, because we're looking for a function that has this kind of form here. So we need to find this, we found the values for A and B, so let's just write them out. No, we haven't found the values, we found the values for A and B on the calculator, but what we haven't yet done is find the values for, oh hang on, sorry, I'm misreading this. We found the value for B and for L and A, that's right. So L and A is 3.99, that's that constant there, and we have found the value for this B here, which is 0 0.75. Okay, because the calculator's it's told us this, and it's told us this. That is LNA, and that is B. It's crucial to see that that is B, but that isn't A, that's LN of A, because that's the function we were working with. Okay, we've got these ones. Now, now it says, got ahead of myself there, now it says, find a model for the cost of producing the shirts. So it wants us to use the original form that the, the person thought it was. So we have to work out what these constants are. And we know what the B is. The B, the power of B there, it is 0 0.75. We have no work to do there. We have found literally what B is. In the linear model, it was just times in the X there. But that was because we did some logarithmic rearrangement. We took it down from the power using logs, and then we found it using linear regression. But that is what B is. It's the same B that was started life up here. So that's great. We've got that. We haven't got A. We've got logarithm, logarithm, natural logarithm of A. How do we get A? Well, if we know that the natural log of A is 3.99, how do you find A? Well, what's the opposite of doing natural log? The opposite of natural log is the power of E. Those two operations are inverse of each other. So I'll show you what that looks like kind of the long way. If you put both of these to as a power of E, you get this and well, that's pretty easy to work out if we just go on the calculator and work out what that would be so that's going to be one here shift and that's 3.99 it's about 54.1 we'll go for so that's that now i said there are inverse operations so i didn't really need to do this step but you can see why they're inverse operations now ln of a is saying what power of e would give you a that's what that means what power of e would give you a well whatever that is if you take that and literally make it the power of e this whole expression must equal a because that means what power of e makes a well now it is the power of e so it must be giving us a so a is 54.1 that's it, then we've got the model, because we now just have to write out the original book with now the, the constants we worked out. So S equals 54.1 times N, which is the input variable, to the power of B, which was 0 0.75, plus C, which we worked out right at the start, as 1,000. So that's that. And... Okay, so the well, the answer here is 54.0. Again, I think that's just because of rounding. Everything else looks good, though. The next question is, she wants to produce 500 shirts a day. Use the model from Part E to estimate the total daily cost. Okay, pretty straightforward. We just have to stick 500 into that. So we calculate on the calculator. 54.1 or 0 0.0, maybe times 500 to the power of 0 0.75 plus a thousand and that would work it out and it turned out to be six i'm not going to work out the calculator because i'm being lazy but it'd be pretty easy to do that and it turned out to be that the next one describe the dangers of using this model to estimate the cost of producing 500 a day well any model 
gets worse and worse and worse the further away from the original data you've got. Now, 500 shirts is pretty far away from the top number of shirts here, 200. So it's like double, it's more than double the amount of the, uh, the shirts she's actually modeled for originally. So she's using extrapolation far beyond the initial data points. So that's the problem with using the model there. Question H, I, describe how you could enter data into your GDC to find the model using the power regression function. So in this case, it's asking us how would it use regression, and I'll ignore this data here for now, but if we were going to do power regression on that, we would go to calculation regression, scroll across to power. Now let's ignore that because that's not the right answer, but what we want to look at is this. When you do power regression, it gives you a model in the form of y equals a multiplied by x to the power of b. That's pretty good, but it's not exactly what we're looking for here, is it? Because we've got s equals a n to the power of b, all good so far, but then plus c. The plus c is the problem here. That's not incorporated in this model. There's no way to do it. So just like at the start, we've got to rearrange it so that you can input data and ask the calculator to calculate a model that looks like this and for it to work. So you have to subtract the C from both sides. So you'd end up kind of what we did at the start with the logs. So you'd end up with, not Y, you'd end up with S minus C equals A N to the power of B. So if you modeled it like this, you could get your function in this form here, which is pretty much exactly what we've got there, isn't it? Just the n and the x, sort of two different letters for the same thing. So you'd have to then do the same trick that we pulled before. When you're inputting the data, you'd have to, rather than just put s in it, you'd have to put s minus c, so you'd have to take a thousand off each one, and then you'd effectively be able to model it like this, with the y on the calculator being s minus c, and then the a can be the a, the n can be the x, and the b can be that's all good there. Hence verify, okay, so you want to do it now, right? So I probably just be doing that rather than talking about it. So if we get rid of all these bits of data here, so x, well, that's just n. So we can put 50, 100, 150, 200, that's all good. Now the s, and we've, got, we've made an adjustment so that we can use the power function on here. So we're going to take a thousand off each one of these. So that's 1,000, 1,800, 2,400, and 2,800. So that's the data now in the right form. Calculate regression, power function, and that's good to see. You can see that it's produced for us an A value of 53.996. That's good enough, isn't it? It's 54. That's the same as what we had before. And the power of which is B is coming out as 0.75. So there's a bit of rounding difference, but you can see it's produced the same answer. And frankly, it's produced much more quickly than the previous uh, method, but it's good to see that you've got two approaches there. Okay, so that's that question. Quite a tricky question, actually, I think. And the last one. Not a great deal easier, I would say. Number three, but also very appropriate. So a flu epidemic is spreading throughout Europe. It is. An estimated 120 million people are susceptible to the particular strain, and it's predicted that eventually all of them will get infected. So straight away, you should be thinking, well, there's a certain type of model that has like an upper limit to it. Remember, exponential models are actually not good models for the, the current pandemic because they go up and up and up and up and up and they go on forever, but that's not really how it would work. There'd be a, an upper limit of people infected, even if that was everyone in the world. And that's called the carrying capacity, and it can be incorporated into a logistic model. So we've got that coming up here. There's 10,000 people already infected when T equals zero, and it's projected that the number of people who are, have been infected will double in the next two weeks. So that all the information you need to work out the model is in there somewhere. We've got to determine the approximate values of the parameters L, C, and K. Right, so straight away, you should just be able to pick out from your knowledge of the logistic model that the top number there, that L, is just the maximum value. It's where the asymptote at the top of the function is going to reach. It's going to max out there. It says 
120 million people are going to be susceptible. That must be L in that case. So L is just going to be that. So let's put that up there. Okay, so try to count my zeros correctly there. So that is our L. We could put this into here now, but we've also got the fact there's 10,000 people infected when T equals zero. So let me just write this out a bit bigger because I know the, I know the camera's not very clear on this. So if I put that up there, that's the L. One plus, well, C times E, the negative KT. So let's just put that in there as it is at the moment. But when T equals zero, that is going to be zero. This whole power here is going to become zero and anything to the power of zero is one. So when T equals zero, that, that whole thing there is one, basically. That means that we've got, to write this number out again, We've got this because it's really just been times by what is now one we're then told that the answer to this is ten thousand the number infected i'm not gonna have enough space here the number infected is ten thousand when the t is zero now to work out what c is we're gonna have to go to our equation solver and type all that in it's crazy to make a mistake on this but if we just do it carefully we should be okay so 10,000 equals, and then let's use the fraction button here, 120 million one plus. Now we're looking for C, the equation solver will find the thing that you call X. We're looking for C, so we're gonna call that X on there. Actually you press the solve button, and it seems to think that C is equal to one one, Nine 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 eleven thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Okay, we have to find k as well. Now, what else have we got here? It says, right. So it says the number of people who've been infected will double in the next two weeks. And what is t? Is t weeks or is t days? T is measured in weeks. Okay, so basically, where t is two then the number of infections has doubled the numbers of infections was this initially so it's going to be double that's going to be twenty thousand. so we can do the same thing again actually we can basically do an equation it's going to equal twenty thousand infected people it's got this number on the top 120 million well, that's going to be there the whole time it's one plus and we know c is now eleven thousand nine hundred ninety nine E is not going to disappear anymore because it's now not power of zero. Minus, well, K is the thing we're trying to find here. So K is going to be our unknown there. It's going to be X on the calculator when we put it in here. And it's going to be times by two because then we're talking about T equals two for two weeks. Type this in. Some of it's already in there, so it's going to be making it a little bit easier. Just turn that to a 20,000. And... And go back up here. And instead of being 1 plus x, it's going to be 1 plus, so 11999 times e. So shift and that. And then we're looking for k, aren't we? So that's going to be the x here. Don't forget to put the negative in. Negative x times 2. Okay, it's pretty complicated. It's so worth double checking that. I just type that in right. Think so. Solve that, and it says that it's zero point three four six six, three point zero point three four seven, and that is fortunately what the answer is there. So k equals zero point three four seven. Okay, so we've got the model complete. Use the model to determine how many people will be infected after four weeks, giving your answer to two significant figures. Pretty straightforward, I suppose, because we now know what all these are. Let's just go on the calculator and type all that in. So, no, not, not there, the actual calculation button there. So, we're doing 120 
million on the top. And then we've got one plus 11,999 times E to the power of negative, what was it, 0 0.347. So 0 0.347 times T. And we're trying to find after four weeks. So T is going to be four now. And there it is. So 40, that's how it says two significant figures. So that's going to be just 40,000, which is, yeah, that's all we got. So looking good. Well, not for these people, but mathematically it's looking good. The infection is considered terminated when 90% of the people have been infected. Use the model to determine how long it will be until the infection can be considered terminated. So we are trying to work out what T is at the point when 90% of people have been infected. So 90% of the potential infections will be 90% of this. Let's work out 90% of 120 million. So that's 108 million. So we're now going to go back to the equation solver. And we now want it to equal 108 million. And we're trying to work out what the T is in that instance. So just be really careful there. We want that to be minus 0 0.347. Yeah, so the K is minus 0 0.347 times we don't know the t now so the t is going to be the x and if we solve this it should tell us what the t needs to be to get to this number here looks like it's 33.4 so in the actual answers it's 33.4 i might have then gone as far as say 34 weeks to round to the nearest whole week it depends on the question context but 33 by 4 or 34 is fine. Okay, hopefully that has helped with some of those trickier questions.